because you can have all the institutions of civil society intact. You can have a judiciary, you can have newspapers, you can have, uh, you know, a parliament or, or, a, or a, a, a congress. But if you've got soldiers, you know, look at Italy in 1920, look at Germany in 30, 31, 32. They were still parliamentary democracies, but the brown shirts or the black shirts were deployed, you know, to beat up this editor in Milan or to, you know, intimidate these voters in Perugia or to line the halls of the Reichstag, you know, in Germany. That's right. It was, it's it's their menacing... It's the, intimidation. It's their menacing and intimidating the Congress. Naomi, uh, did you know that members of Congress on the day of the bailout were threatened that Friday with physical martial law if they did not pass the bailout plan? Well, to speak to me more about that because um, I, I'm having a very interesting experience, and I'm glad to be speaking to you about it. John, pull up uh, the congressman. We had him on air, too. That, that I know. I've been following this, and actually I mentioned it, Alex, in an, a radio interview um, that was posted on YouTube that went very, very viral, in which I was saying, look at the 1st Brigade and look at what Brad Sherman has said in C-SPAN about you know individual members of the House being threatened with, quote-unquote, martial law in America if... The bailout so there, I mean, there you have it, though. This, this is the menacing, the out of control criminal executive looting everything, taking trillions, not seven hundred billion, into offshore corporations and banks. I mean, this is it. It's here. We're we're under martial but, law now. Al Alex, Alex, be before we, I mean, yes, in the sense of uh, how can I put this? I want to be a little bit. I want to be a little bit. Um, how can I put it? more measured because I don't want people to conclude that it's over. I want people to conclude that no, it's No, no, no. They've, they've right. turned it on right. and they're trying to implement it incrementally with, hey, the Army's here to help people get out of wrecked exactly. cars. Exactly. Again, exactly. that's the, oh, look, the Army's here to help get us out of the exactly. broke down car. It's the stealth coup. It's the stealth coup. But do we have a second source for the Brad Sherman assertion? Has he confirmed it? Yes. No, no. I, I, I had Brad Sherman on and I talked to other members of Congress who will not come on the show. And they said that, no, they were told martial law is going to be declared if you don't do this. I mean, I had Brad Sherman on the show, and uh, and he, by the way, is a lawyer, a specialist on all this. Stay there, Naomi Wolf. We're going to continue to talk about this. In fact, I'm just going to skip this break right now. Are you sick of... John, let's just skip it. That way, for the Internet audience, I can cover this. Uh, if you Google, what I Googled uh, was Air Force test weapons on unruly crowds, and then the AP has been pulled. It was up for about a year. It's suddenly gone. It's been pulled, but LexisNexis uh, can get it for you. But um, a bunch of other websites saved it. Air Force Chief proposes testing pain guns on unruly Americans. Mm. And it goes on um, to uh, say that the Secretary of the Air Force, Michael Wayne, uh, said, We're up for re-election. We, we doubt that this proposal to test non-lethal weapons on American citizens before deploying them abroad would win him any votes. Specifically, Wayne told Associated Press... If we're not willing to use it here against our fellow citizens, then we should not be willing to use it in a wartime situation because if it hits somebody with a non-lethal weapon and they claim that it injured them in a way that was not intended, I think that I would be vilified in the world press. Mm -hmm. That would certainly, and then he goes on to say, so use it on the American people. And then Wired Magazine last week, or actually 10 days ago, reported in the headline that the pain microwave guns do cause death. Uh, that's in the headline. Jesus. Uh, so just just Google microwave guns death. And in fact, let's just do that together right now. Let's just Google microwave guns death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, microwave, microwave gun death. And uh, Alex, how can you how can you bear the strain of absorbing these these streams of information? I'm you know I'm having a hard time with just wrapping my brain around the deployment of the first brigade. Well, well, I mean, we're in a war situation here, yeah. and uh, and so we just got to be cool and get the info out. Right, uh, but, right. I mean, just like you're doing, you're doing a great job. Okay, I, I, I'm not going with the right headline here. Let me try uh, uh, Army's non-lethal weapon death. Let me see. Army non-lethal... No, no, no. Crowd control death. That's it. The New Yorker piece that I cited in Give Me Liberty definitely talked about the microwave um, guns. What they do is they raise the, if I remember this correctly, they basically microwave people. I mean, they raise the body temperature, you know, to this excruciating degree from a long-distance position. 
I'm just going to try. Oh, I'm going to try Death and then Wired magazine. And again, we're just on the internet right now, so we're kind of mm-hmm. just cooling our heels here, doing some research. Ah, it's driving me crazy. Somebody will post it in the uh, in the uh, Prison Planet forum, and, and and then I can just copy it all and email it to you, Naomi. But no, Thank no, I mean. You very much. But 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 the big point I didn't make earlier was then I'd go back to my hotel at night for these four days watching the Marines in '99, and they would announce the Marines are not doing this for in the U.S. They're doing this for in Macedonia and other missions, and then I would be there knowing they would tell the press that, and then letting citizens actually see it was for the. I mean I have it on video, Naomi. Right. No, I will look. Of course I'll look. The the trouble. The, I I have an easier time um, presenting an argument that is taken seriously when I can use um, print sources, it's hard for me to convey videotape footage in a way that is um, uh, taken seriously by a sort of more mainstream debate. Well, you're, but I will, I will take a look. Yeah, you're free to use uh, any of the clips from Police Day 2000, Police Day 2, The Takeover, Police Day 3, Total Enslavement. This is back when I was the... Oh, we're back live on the show. Here we go. Okay. Stonewall, 1903 to 1954. She lost both of her babies in the second. It's the old frog in the pot analogy. We were on a three in the record scale with martial law back in 98. We're about a six and a half right now. Maybe a seven with the, announces, uh, the announcement of these brigades. But uh, also in Road to Tyranny, I interview a Marine Corps captain who saw an Army checkpoint in I-35 in 2000 and got mad. So he contacted me, showed me all the documents. They had secret programs in the late 80s with Marines dressing up in police uniforms in Norfolk, Virginia, uh, doing uh, gun raids and drug raids. Uh, so they've been covertly doing this for a long time, Naomi. So, so, And it goes back to Rex 84. But please continue with all your great research as we continue to collate more information here on air. Thank you. Well, what I just wanted to say from my point of view is that, you know, when when we say, well, we're at seven in terms of martial law, I think the thing that I want us to think about is that part of what gets us to seven is, say, the deployment of troops or uh, passage of, of laws like the Defense Authorization Act of 2007 and so on. But part of what gets us to seven and eight and beyond is people's complacency in the face of it. So to me, the psychological piece of how we receive this is very, very important. Um, And this is, again, why I went back to the founders and the founding generation. We really have to, you know, what I learned from the research I did in Give Me Liberty is that you can't reclaim liberty without a psychological shift in ordinary people first. Um, that as what I learned is that America is supposed to be not a landmass and not a system of government primarily, but first a psychological state in which there's an inner sense of freedom, an inner commitment to freedom, and a personal conviction to be outraged and not stand for it when tyranny and oppression raise their heads. And you know, I did find that we were we are being brainwashed now, not just for the last eight years, which have been dramatic, but the last thirty years in a messaging about what you know what I call fake patriotism, where, for instance, you know, we're taught that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which is interpreted as kind of just relax and shop, you know, is the meaning of the Declaration of Independence. But in fact, Alex, the second paragraph we're never taught, which is, you know, that the Declaration of Independence is actually a personal uh, commitment demanded of each and every American to stand up against tyranny and oppression wherever it raises its head, but also to confront and bring down the government if it engages in um, repression and tyranny against the people, in a war against the people. Uh, we're committed to being revolutionaries as Americans. Um, there's, there's, there's just been this like 30-year messaging. You know, it's, it's so much deeper than just this deployment. It's been like this messaging to get us to go to sleep, get us to forget our rights. I found out that, you know, civics education is di- disappearing from half of U.S. high schools. Um, you know, kids are going, going to college now, not knowing what a republic is supposed to look like. You know, what, you know, not knowing what their liberties are, let alone recognize them being threatened. Um, you know, we're being told that patriotism is about never criticizing the government or supporting any military intervention, whereas I discovered that the great 
Americans, the great patriots, held a mirror up to America and that that's what we're supposed to do. So I really want to stress the first shift for us is, is to be outraged when we hear about the deployment, to be outraged when we um, see this war against citizens and All to right. take on this. Yeah, yeah, stay there. Stay there. We'll be right back in one minute. 